Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be looking at number stories that have multiplication involved and something else. Multi-step multiplication number stories. We're in our home links, Unit 4, Lesson 12, and here we go. It says write estimates and number models for each problem, then solve. We're going to try number one together. Rosalie is collecting stickers for her scrapbook. She collected eight stickers per day for two weeks and then collected five stickers per day for two weeks. How many stickers has Rosalie collected? So I thought first we would create our number model, then create an estimate that will help us determine how close our answer should be. So Rosalie collected stickers. So before we dive into that, let's remind ourselves that when we approach a number story problem, we should have a game plan. And my game plan has always been ruckus. Well, not always. This is a strategy I learned as a math teacher. I didn't have this as a kid. So aren't you lucky now in the uh, 21st century that we have new approaches to math? Hey, ruckus stands for reread the problem, underline the question, circle important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve. So let's reread. Rosalie is collecting stickers for a scrapbook. She collected eight stickers per day for two weeks. And then she collected five stickers per day for two weeks. How many stickers has Rosie, Rosalie collected? Okay, so what's our number model? Okay, so first we have to figure out how many stickers she collected in that two-week period when she had eight stickers per day. So... I'm going to take eight stickers, and I'm going to multiply it by the number of days that are in two weeks. Well, there's seven days in one week, so I would multiply that by 14 for two weeks. And then I'm going to take that amount, and then I'm going to add that to five stickers per day for two weeks. So then, same idea, five times the number of days in two weeks, which is 14. So eight times 14 plus five times 14 will give us our answer. So S for stickers. So now we need to come up with an estimate. So there's a couple ways we can approach this. Since we've got single digit and double digit numbers, we can just round the double digit numbers or we can round both the single and the double digits, okay? So eight times 14, that's, if I were to round that to the nearest 10 a piece, I would round it to 10 times 10. And then five times 14, uh, five rounds up to a 10, because that's the halfway point. And again, 14 rounds down to 10. So I'm gonna add 10 times 10 plus 10 times 10 to give me my total amount. Well, 10 times 10, of course, is 100. And I'm going to add that to another 100. So my ballpark estimate is going to be 200 stickers. Okay. So now I have to do the actual calculations to figure out what 8 times 14 and... 5 times 14 gives me, okay? So I can approach this in one of two ways, either using partitioning rectangles or partial products. But let's do 8 times 14 partial product style. And notice how I put 14 above the 8. The order in which I multiply two numbers does not affect the outcome. The factors can go in any order. So I did that so that I could think about 14 as 10 and 4. So I'm going to multiply 10 times 8, and I'm going to multiply 4 times 8. Now, I could have done it the other way. 8 times 14. And I could have just reversed those numbers. 8 times the 10 and 14, and then 8 times the 4 and 14. But let's go with the strategy I laid out in blue. 10 times 8 is 80, and 4 times 8 is 32. So if I collected 8 stickers a day for 2 weeks, that would give me a total of 112 stickers. 
And now I have to do the same thing for 5 times 14. 5 times 14, of course, I would set up the problem like so. So 10 times 5 and 4 times 5. And again, I could have reversed those orders, which I showed you in the other problem. But since I know 10 times 5 is 50 and 4 times 5 is 20, I get my second total as being 70. So now what I have to do is I take 8 times 14, that product, which is 112, and I'm going to add that to 70, and that gives me my total. So what is 112 plus 70? Well, let's line those place values up so we don't have any calculation errors. It's going to give me a total of 182 stickers. 182 stickers is my answer. Now, is that answer reasonable? Well, yes, because my estimate was 200. And 182 is pretty darn close to 200. In fact, if you round 182 to the nearest 100, it would be 200. Okay? Even if you rounded it to the nearest 10, 180, that's still pretty close to 200. So if I had 182 stickers laid out in front of me in no discernible order, just like on a table, if I looked at it, I would say, yeah, that's probably about a 200. Okay, and that's how we approach multiple step problems that in some part involve multiplication. Now you notice we also had some addition involved. So when we say multi-step, that means there might be more than one computation involved. There might be multiplication and addition or multiplication and subtraction. Uh, maybe even multiplication and division later on down the road. Who knows? Multiple step means that there's two parts that you have to solve. So we'll let you try to solve the problem number two with Rashad's sister and baseball cards. Okay. Now down here at the bottom, we are being asked to think about factor pairs. Okay. Let's take a look at, uh, oh, let's take a look at 85. Now 85 is, of course, an odd number. So we know 2 is not going to be a factor. Okay. But we know that 1 is a factor because all numbers have at least one pair of factors. That's the number 1 and the number itself. But we also know that as an odd number ending in 5, we know that 5 is also a factor. So I need to skip count by 5s to figure out how many groups of 5 it takes to get to 85. Or I can just use some deductive reasoning. I know that 20 times 5 gives me 100. So if I were to... Uh, count backwards by fives from 100, 195, 90, 85. That's just three groups of five uh, away from 100, or three less than 20. Okay, so five times 17 would give me 85. And with that, friends, we've run out of factor pairs because 85 again is an odd number and so 2 is not a factor um, neither is 10 because it ends in 5 uh, and because 17 is a prime number itself there's no other way to split this up um, into uh, smaller parts that I could redistribute in other factor pairs so there are only 4 factors total or 2 factor pairs Okay. All the other numbers, as you can see, are even, so you know they're going to be composite. So that means there's going to be multiple ways to get to, say, 50 by multiplying two numbers together. If you have questions about prime and composite numbers, factor pairs, or approaching uh, multi-step number stories that involve multiplication, talk to your math teachers. Uh, of course, that is the quickest way that you're going to get your answers solved. Now, of course, you can watch these videos that uh, yours truly uh, puts out with every lesson, and of course, they're very helpful, but if you have specific questions, I can't divine them from my side of my uh, Explain Everything app and this YouTube video. So talk to the real live person that has been assigned to you to be of service. 
That's what teachers do. They serve their students, and they will happily serve you if they know there's an issue. So talk to them. Ask them questions. Until we meet again, friends, I wish you good luck with this assignment, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.